Hi, it's Cara Riley here, and we're with the Photo Tour Global Directory event today, and I can't tell you how excited I am, and uh, this, the phone just keeps ringing. I'm going to, uh, uh, anyway, you're just going to have to ignore that, and uh, we've got bells ringing because of the people that we have sharing here. We have Nick Papagalas Jr. from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, an amazing photographer who just went through a harrowing experience with a flash flood. And he uh, is the CEO at the um, PAC, Photographers Adventure Club. And uh, so here we're, we'll be talking with Nick in a few minutes here. Nick, look at that smile. What a handsome guy. Good and we have another handsome guy, Alex. And Alex McClure is, uh, I love this, Olympus Visionary Trailblazer. What what a great title uh, for Alex. And um, he's going to tell us a little bit about what he does. But first, the question is, what is Photo Tour Global Directory? It's a brand new site that is de has been developed to connect the consumer with photographers as a directory service, the yellow pages, wherever you are in the world, you can connect with consumers sharing what you have. And Nicholas is one of our newest members, and I'm going to let Nick talk about what he does, and then we'll get right to the harrowing flood experience with some great photos. So Nick, tell us all about what you do. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, what do I do? I, I basically have built a camera club. Um, it started out with about 200 people, and I acquired it from someone else that didn't want to do it anymore. Um, I sent an email out. I was actually a member of the club and uh, just was talking to them, like, when are you guys going to do events? You know, I'm in this club. I want events. And they're like, you know what? I'm not doing it anymore. You could have it. Um, when I acquired it, no one was active at all. So it was 200 people that did nothing, and we've grown it today to um, 10,000 people in three short years. So um, it's it's been a lot of work. It's taken a lot of leaders' help and a lot of people in the background to do that, but um, it's it's been a great experience. I've learned so much. My photography has jumped leaps and bounds from there. Um, I transitioned from being a DJ and MC for weddings and events to a... Um, photographer full-time and also to teaching photography full-time so um, I'm actually getting out of event photography to be um, a teacher all the time so it's uh, it's been quite a run and quite an experience and I'm loving every minute of it well I I'll tell you I, I you you don't sleep you are from one event to the next so it's it's great uh, with the activity that you're you're going through and yep. then um, Alex um, <laughs> tell us about this uh, luminary uh, from Olympus and, and what you're doing. And in the green room, he showed us a new toy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I actually am a Olympus Trailblazer, and what that is is I'm like an ambassador for the brand. Um, through my photography, um, Olympus has asked me to join this program, and Basically, I go around and I show new products and I talk about it and I talk about photography and um, it's been a great experience. I um, was in New York a couple weeks ago and we just had the release party for the new Olympus, um, can you see that? The new Ooh, EM1. Yeah. And wow. the EM1, we actually had a release party in New York City on the air car carrier Intrepid. And one of the things that I got to do was I light painted the bridge of the Intrepid aircraft carrier. It's the biggest wow. thing I've ever light painted. <laughs> and <clears throat> yeah, and people were um, given memory cards at the beginning. They were able to load them in the cameras and shoot images. So we had people there from, um, I believe, the CEO from B and H, from Adorama, the CEO from Amazon. Um, we had people from Popular Photography Magazine, Outdoor Magazine. Um, a whole bunch of blog people, um, the president from Olympus flew out from Japan, um, the U.S. Uh, president uh, for Olympus was there also, um, and there was five of us visionaries there doing different things. Um, 
So it's really, really been an amazing uh, ride. But uh, I also work with Nick with the Photography Adventure Club, and I do about I do probably 20 events a year with them, and then I help out with about another 20 events a year. So Nick and I are constantly chatting. We we actually are friends and go out and shoot all the time together. And um, so that's kind of how uh, I know Nick and uh, what I do. Well, that's great. Well, I, what it, it what an honor to have you both on here. Um, that you're actually really working uh, in the field of landscape photography, and you are actually bringing dollars and cents in. And today, I think I'm you know to, to get to a, a little bit of a somber note um, uh, is talking about being prepared for things that can happen in nature. Uh, yesterday, I was in Sedona and hiking up to the the top of the airport vortex and man the uh, the the gravel was so loose you know it, it, after having watched Nick's uh, Fox News 10 <laughs> video about what can happen out there it sure was making me a lot uh, more um, careful with what I'm doing and uh, being aware of the weather so Nick Give us a little bit of a, a history of what happened. You were at the Havasupai Trail. You were hiking down, and all I'm doing is thanking my lucky stars because I was actually going to go on that trip and meet you down there with the helicopter. And um, but anyway, so tell us tell us about the trip, how how it got started, um, sure. how you do your trip too. Well, what, one part of um, the Photographer's Adventure Club is that we actually um, run expeditions, all these uh, photography workshop expeditions. Alex is actually helping me with that. Um, right before Olympus picked him up, we started building one for Joshua Tree. Um, and this one, um, he wasn't able to make it because he was going out to shoot the bridge um, in New York. So I, I was a little jealous. I was like, oh, I'm going to see have a suit by, but I'm like, I want to be going with him. He's got something way cooler on his plate. So um, we, um, we planned these events, and it was um, a great thing to be able to bring out to the club and show people different parts of Arizona. It's a gorgeous state. Um, I came from New Jersey originally, which is not as pretty as out here. It's, um, and I wanted to show it off to everyone, bring people to different places. Um, so this trip was planned a couple months ago. Um, uh, three leaders went on it. We were kind of doing like a recon trip um, to go check everything out. I've been down there before, and I wanted to bring my new equipment out and kind of see what I can do with it. So then when I do bring a bigger group down, I know what I'm doing. I always like to do my research and not just show up someplace. So um, in the picture you see on the screen, and hopefully you can see it, is uh, Scott Alec to the left. He's a leader. Lori from Vivix. Um, she's one of our sponsors that sponsors the prints we're going to talk about later from Vivix Printing and then myself. And uh, you can see it's an overcast day there at the top. Nothing too bad to worry about. We, we started to hike down the different switchbacks and everything. Let's see if I can get them to move. So we started to hike down the switchbacks and um, it was a pretty dry wash actually until we got to the bottom. Um, some of the pictures you're seeing right now are in between two of the floods and you can see her shoes aren't even covered in there you know the water's very low um, but this picture you're seeing on the screen right now is the rain coming in when we got to the bottom so we were kind of already into the hike and um, all that white was just a wall of water coming towards us um, so there was really no chance that we could have ran back but it, it did pass um, but what happened, that wash you're seeing on the screen right now was dry. That's the one we were walking in. Um, not two minutes before this picture was taken, there was not a drop of water in there. And we kind of ducked out into a cave to st um, save ourselves and equipment from the rain. And then we went back out and looked at the wash, and it was a river. Um, it came that quick. It was um, in under two to five minutes, this happened. It started off a little bit, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then basically it washed the whole wash out. Um, this was the first one, so we kind of flipped out. We were like, wow, this is insane. We've never seen anything like this. Um, it's amazing. Look at how much water there is. I would say this was about knee deep to thigh deep, and I'm 6'1", so not super deep, enough to probably wash a car away, um, and you can see how violent it is there. One of the things we noticed right off the bat was the loud note. You didn't hear it coming at all 
which makes it even scarier. Like we didn't know. The reason I went to go look at it is I heard water behind us, and there was a waterfall that formed and kind of came down to the right of our cave we were in. So I went to go check that out, and then I noticed the water in the wash. So um, it got really violent really quick. This is a picture from up top. We were hiding out. If you look in the way left, you'll see a big rock there. That's the cave we were in. And then we hiked up top and looked at it from like a panoramic view. So a couple of things you really have to be aware of is the weather around you. These flash floods actually happen like 50 miles away, and then it gets down to you. So it's nowhere near where you are sometimes. It just happened to be that we got warned by the rain the first time. as like, hey, watch out. That flood didn't come from that rain where we were. It came from the rain 40, 50 miles upriver. So what happens in this canyon specifically is all these waterfalls start to form, um, and all the water from the top mesas and plateaus comes down into the canyon, and it makes it worse. So you have water from 40, 50 miles away, and then you have, like, tons of waterfalls that the place suddenly looks beautiful. It's like Jurassic Park scene, just waterfalls coming from everywhere. And it, uh, you're out there taking pictures of it, and you don't really realize that it's all coming towards you eventually. So you got to think how many miles the Grand Canyon is and how much water is coming off of all these plateaus, and it's just basically a big sewer drain that you're in. Um, the other thing about Havasupai is that's the only way in or out for us and for the tribe members. So all the, all the horses and pack horses and mules, they bring the garbage out, they bring the mail in, they bring the mail out, they bring the food in. Um, the tribal members can either take horses, but most of the time they take the helicopter in and out. So these horses keep this place alive. Um, so they usually don't stop them. And, and this was an unusually large flood, so um, I know a lot of people had resonated with that the horses were killed and they shouldn't have been in there. They were in there and their lives were at just as much risk as ours with their handlers and everything too. So it's, um, it's really something, you know, you could see them there. It's only two inches of water. It was, it was fine until it wasn't. And the horses and the handlers have no idea that they're coming just like the people don't. They're doing yeah. their job just like they do every day. And yeah. um, when things like this happen, it's just an accident. People don't, you know, people not, might not understand that. Yeah, because they wouldn't have put them in there. People are like, why weren't they taken out? Why weren't they told? They're just, they're, they have a job just like anyone else. So they're just doing their job, and, you know, they don't want to lose these horses. You know, it's um, it's unfortunate what happened, but it, you know, um, these they, literally these people passed us minutes before, and they got stuck in an area of the canyon that I'm glad we didn't get stuck in. What happened was, you can see the canyon here. We're on, like, a little edge where I'm taking pictures of him. Um, that wasn't there where these horses went. As soon as we went around the corner later, it went to sheer cliffs. So there was no place for these guys and the horses to run at all. So this picture I'm showing you now is where the bigger flash flood came. So the little flash flood, which we thought was amazing, was actually nothing compared to this one. Um, you can see there is edges here on the side we're on. So we were down where that big wall of water was, and we were in the water, and it was about um, knee deep. So we started to we started to hike down between the two flash floods. The water went way down, and we um, walked up to this point, and we started to notice. Scott and I started to notice that the water got swifter. Lori had already passed us. She's a trooper. She used to be. A, I, I was a firefighter. She was also a wildland fire, fire, firefighter. So she had actually just gone ahead of us, and our cameras were lower on our belts and everything, so we were being a little bit more cautious. Um, and she was out of the water already and didn't feel this happening, but we were feeling the water get stronger. He looked at me, he's like, what's going on? And we, all of a sudden, a helicopter comes out of nowhere. Like, literally. It just comes down into the canyon and um, f throws his door open. You probably saw us in the news. Throws his door open and, like, points at us and waves and then tells us to go up higher. So the... Um, what happened was we went up about three to five feet, like right on the edge there, which you can't see anymore. And he, we look back, and he like waves his arms like in a big X pattern, and is like, no, and points up really high at the top of the cliff and says, go up there. So Lori can't see any of this. You can see the wall of water right there. You can see how much water is right in that spot um, where we were walking. So we get up higher on the cliff, turn around. We, it was only about a minute and 20 seconds um, turn around, and this was there, right where we were. This huge wall of water came out of nowhere and just down, the, like, just boom, out of nowhere. 
Uh, and you didn't hear it. It was totally silent again. Um, that rock that you see right here is in the middle of that water. So this is when it drained out. You can see how high those rocks are. Those are, those are huge rocks that were taller than us. It's really hard on a picture to really see how big that is, but um, you, know, you can see the tree next to it, how big these rocks are. So that's when it started to drain out. Um, so I, we yelled at Lori. Lori got up on the cliff, and we all got to a safe another cave where we were hiding out. And um, what happened was we had to hang out there for about four or five hours because that water was that high for that long. So really that's where we ducked out and, um, and waited for it to get this low again. And the scariest part of all of it um, was getting back in the water because it still was this high, even though this, this came way down, but it's not up on that ledge up there. Um, we had to get back in that raging water where there were rocks tumbling. You could hear the rocks hitting each other and rolling. And, uh, you know, to get in there at night when it was dark and no flashlights and keep walking the extra four miles was kind of a, a scary task. So a few more pictures here, and if you have questions, just let me know. Um, by the time we got down there, it was 10 o'clock at night, so it was 12 hours of hiking from 10 in the morning to 10 at night. And um, everyone was evacuated from the campgrounds, and this is where Alex can kind of step in too because he has the opposite view of 2008. He was in the campground when this happened um, in 2008, so he was already down there camping and got evacuated like these people did. We were stuck on the way down, so it's two different perspectives. That's why I invited him to kind of come out and share his perspective because he had to haul his wet gear up the hill and do what these people did. So if you want to jump in, Alex, and tell him your view from that side... Yeah, well, in 2008, we went down there, and um, <clears throat> basically, it was a beautiful sunny day. We went down, we got down to the falls, we set up our camp, and we um, played in the water all day, took pictures, had a great time. Then, um, then as it got dark, it started raining, and it literally rained all night. About 2, 3 in the morning, we heard the rangers down there, and they were actually down at the lower camps evacuating the people out of there. We had a nice high campground, one of the first campgrounds. It's actually extremely high, so we didn't have any problem. I mean, we slept all night. It rained all night. It was it was a good night's sleep. And when we got up in the morning, we found out that all the camps below us had been evacuated, and a bunch of people were getting helicoptered out. So we packed up everything like we would normally, and um, it had stopped. It was a light sprinkle by that point. Uh, we packed up all our stuff and um, sent it back up on the mules and started hiking out in our basically our sandals. Uh, when we got to the fall, instead of it being the nice, green, beautiful, pristine water was, it was it looked like chocolate milk <laughs> is uh, basically the way to describe it, a huge waterfall of chocolate milk. And I looked up and saw a little what looked like a cardboard box coming up towards the edge of the fall and realized that there was a window in it and watch that go right over the fall. So it was it looked like somebody's tool shed or something that just went over. But all the bridges were washed out and we hiked to the base of the mountain in our sandals. And when we got to the base of the mountain, because we were wading through like uh, knee deep, thigh deep water at a lot of places where a lot of the bridges and stuff were, because you couldn't use the bridge because both sides of it were washed out. And uh, through town it was the same kind of thing. We were wading through water that was uh, knee deep and when we got to the bottom of the climb, we put on our shoes and hiked out. Uh, what was really funny is the next day on the uh, on the news, we heard that everybody was evacuated by a helicopter, and <laughs> you know we were thinking, well, wait a second, we didn't get a helicopter ride out. So, but it was it was a quite a bit different experience than you had. Let, let me uh, tell you, let me tell you about the evacuation with the helicopter. That that's like, hey, pay us eighty five dollars and we'll evacuate you with the helicopter. So it, was, it wasn't a, a like, all right, we're gonna get you out of here for free. It was like we're gonna helicopter you out, but you're gonna still pay us for it. So I, we had to pay eighty five bucks each to get helicoptered out, and we were too beat up to hike back out. Um, um, Scott was falling the whole time. We had tons of gear. My my foot was messed up from going over my ankle in the dark. You know, thirty times. We we were pretty pretty beat up from that 12-hour hike. Neither None of us had really slept. We were so excited to go that um, we I slept till, you know, we got we left Mesa, or we left Tempe at 3 a.m. So I drove from, or I think I drove from uh, 3 a.m. to 3.20 from Mesa to Tempe, and then we drove up there, and then we hiked down, and then we got stuck till 10 p.m. at night. So it was a long day for us. And by the time we got down there, 
I, I know the girls that were camping next to us um, were um, actually hella backed out. We weren't, and, and they were having nightmares and stuff. I'm like, I slept like a baby. I just, I, I was so exhausted that I couldn't like move. I just got in my tent. We ate dinner because we didn't have any lunch. We all our all our food and supplies and flashlights were all on the pack horses. Um, so we didn't have any of that. So we got down. We just ate really quick, and I passed out. So. Um, it was definitely not an evacuation that you would think like, oh, we're going to get you out of here. It's an emergency. It was like, you know, still a money-making thing for them. Well, this is, it's so interesting to hear, hear you talk about it. And we have uh, one of our guests uh, in the event, uh, Sheila Du Bois uh, from Utah. Um, she said uh, her husband's a firefighter. So, Nick, I think there's a bonding here. Cool, cool. And when you, when you think about, um, okay, you guys are physically fit. And um, so as new photographers are, are thinking about what it is they're going to do and how they're going to take their shot and every photographer has their story you know they're uh, <laughs> of getting the shot story and they even have a um, daily photography theme that you guys might want to know about it's on Thursday and it's I almost died Thursday and it's about getting the shot <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's fun. fun I to need to do I that. I have I have twelve of those experiences. I started counting after this one because I was like thinking of getting a tattoo of like little hash marks on my arm. I have a tattoo on my arm. You can't read it, but it says "Dream as if you'll live forever, live as if you'll die today." And I was okay. thinking of doing little hash marks underneath it. And I got then I started counting the other day at the gym. I'm like, wow, that's way too many times to have brushes with death. So I. You know, it's um, yeah, and and being a photographer, you've got to really, you got to really be aware of the environment. Um, yeah. I've been in avalanches, I've been in rock slides. Um, Nick and I uh, have been in lightning storms that uh, were way too close. Um, yeah. We've uh, <laughs> yeah, the last time we were up at uh, Page, I got some great lightning shots, and at one point I decided to uh, go sit in the car and do some stuff because the bolts were getting pretty close. And him and our friend Susie were underneath the tailgate of it. And I felt the pressure in the car actually shift. And, like, instantaneously there was a flash and a boom. And both of them started, you know, hollering because it literally hit, I don't know, what was it, 150 feet away from the car? Oh, yeah, it hit, it hit like a telephone pole or a light pole, like, right across the street. <laughs> right, right. Like At that point, it's like, okay, we're done. Everybody back in the car. So, um, <laughs> so you really need to be aware of your environment. I've been stuck on the top of a mountain in a lightning storm in Flagstaff before. And uh, literally, while everybody's thinking about getting off the mountain, I'm kind of looking around seeing, I wonder if I'd get a shot. And it's it's one of those lightning storms we were in where it's not like a blast every 20 or 30 seconds. This thing is literally hitting the ground every five or six seconds. And I turn around because my hair stands up on my arms, and I watch a bolt hit the ground and actually do like, a little dance, and at that point I was like, "Hey guys, look! Oh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Let's just get off this hill." But my hair literally stood up on my arms right before that bolt hit. So wow. it was it was close enough to smell the wood burning from the tree it hit. Oh my gosh! Well, you know, there's so many gorgeous shots, and and this morning, Nick, I shared one of your um, shots in the desert of a, a lightning bolt uh, with the Seguro, you know, being seen in the ambient light. And um, it really is, I think, and that's that was the reason for this show, is to have people have a mental um, preparation before you go out. And I know one of the things that we talked about was, um, you know, if your cell phone goes out, if you're out hiking around doing all this, you may not get a cell phone information. So also having um, somewhere in your backpack, in your jeans pocket, you know, um, emergency numbers. When, oh, okay, now Alex is going to tell us a little more. I opened the door, but really it is important, and people do need to know where you're going and what it is you um, need to take with you. So, Alex, show us that again. I, uh, I was talking, and show us that again. Well, this is my, uh, my desert survival kit. And I carry this with me whenever I'm hiking. And basically, I have um, purifying tablets in case I get still water, waterproof matches, whistle, and a small flashlight, um, a compass, um, just in case you need something like that. I carry a little mini tool. This is one of the micro tools. 
Um, it's actually the smallest Leatherman I think they make. I was going to say, it looks like a baby Leatherman. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really tiny. I carry a Swiss steel in case my, can you see that? A Swiss steel in case my, um, my matches got wet or I ran out of matches. Um, this is actually a, you know, the space blankets. This is the same thing, but it's actually a bag, a, a full-length, like, sleeping bag that I could climb into. Um, a very small knife, um, just trying to stay light. Um, so these are things I always have on me, um, just in case I ever get stuck. This will help me survive for a day or two in the wilderness if I need to. So um, that, that brings up a whole, whole, the whole concept of wilderness survival. And I just want to thank some of the people on that have uh, shared photos on our event because I think th this is what is fun about events on Google Plus because people can come in, share their photos, and we have photos from all over the world. Um, we have photos from Italy, we have photos from Prague, um, we have uh, storms brewing. Uh, David Pond shared a, a photo of um, rescue people learning rescue training in the water. Um, and then we've got photos of the sky, which is what you both were talking about, that we'll ha you'll have signs. You just need to be alert when you see that sky behind you. Where is that water coming from? So uh, we just want to express our gratitude to each and every one of you. Patrick Wilmain uh, shared uh, Val Valmar Norvik. I, I love our, our, our global um, waters and disasters here. There, there was one, and some of you didn't label, Totino Mariano, uh, raging water coming through. It looks like you know a European uh, bridge. And so it doesn't matter where you are. And here in Venice, now I know um, when we were in Venice, we had to walk on uh, risers in St. Mark's Square because the tide comes in. Oh, so yeah. here well, now, it looks like uh, we've got uh, Nick back sharing some lightning with us. This so is the storm that um, Alex was talking about up in Page. You could see the hill. We're, we're right there, like where that close one hits is right over that hill. This isn't the one that hit the pole. This is a much better shot, but I have yeah, the one that hit the pole. The um, campground's just on the other have, side of that. What? The campground's right there. Yeah, so yep. th this storm was so active. It, like he said, every five seconds, you couldn't not get a shot, you know? So, And it is true about St. Mark's Square. There's... um. We have a we have a member that's from in our pack group that shares pictures from there all the time, and he has all kinds of floods and everything from uh, from that. So, so the picture Nick just showed that's where I was standing um, <laughs> when I took this one. Can you see that? Oh wow! That's and you know, a lightning shot is on my list. Okay, guys, and now I'm scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is dangerous and. and I don't think I do it as people are like, oh, we're adrenaline junkies. Um, I don't think it's that. We're going after the perfect shot. You know, when I was younger, I was adrenaline junkie. Um, now, not so much. I'm a, I'm a little <laughs> more cautious. I, I try to stay outside the storm, stay away, but, you know, it is a dangerous situation. So it's always better to, you know, in Arizona, the thing that's good about it is the storms are isolated. So you can stay dry and stay away from them and still get shots of them. And I prefer that. Um, some of our friends get right in it, and it gets a little hairy. So, well, and I think uh, if you're just starting out, and I think you do have to know your personal limitations. And you know, going back to your Havasupai event, um, that was one of my icon sh shots, and I'm like, oh my gosh, here it is, right here on this meetup event. I can go with these nice people, I haven't ever met them before, but I'm like, I'm going to do this because I want to go down there. But I knew from my physical standpoint, hiking down eight miles and hiking back, it wasn't on my list of things to do. So I thought, well, I can just meet them with a helicopter, okay? Because, and even Nick, we, we had talked about this because yeah. you said the first time you did it, it was physically draining and you wanted to take the helicopter, right? <laughs> um, I was supposed to take the helicopter. So um, my thing was we were actually supposed to do it for a bigger group, but I didn't get it up. Um, quickly enough. So um, basically, I was my goal was to have the group hike down. I was going to fly in, get because you have to get permits and get everything approved, get the campground, 
accept all the gear from the um, the mule train. Um, so I was going to go do all the business part of the the stuff that no one ever sees when we plan workshops. That that's my that was my goal, and and possibly sometimes I get there a day before set camp up and everything. So that was what I was going to do. Um, but with the um, with the small group of just leaders going, I'm like, okay, they're all friends. It's you know, we're, let's all hike down. Yeah, there's a picture that Alex has up now. Of uh, I don't know if you could click on have a soup pie. Okay, nope. No, I, I, got, I, got it, I got it on there. You have it on there as the front picture. Yeah, I have it. I have it screen shared. That that's the picture I was going for. So uh, <laughs> you know, my goal was to fly down, meet everyone down there. And uh, when it was such a small group, I was like, let's just hike down as friends. Uh, I, I didn't, we didn't carry our gear. We gave it to the mule train. So that was much easier. The hike itself is not that terrible. It's a pretty flat, boring hike. The flood makes it a little more exciting. So, um. <laughs> right. And now you're well, planning a trip in May, right? Yeah, we're going to plan a trip the, in May okay. to go down there again um, to get the actual correct, um, you know, picture. So um, that's, that's the goal. So, uh, Okay, so can we have an option of those of us who want to fly, fly in on the helicopter and fly out on the helicopter? That's the one I'm signing up for. Like, we'll get you, we'll get you a group that that we have here. But the the interesting thing is that because it is the shuttle for the Native Americans, they get on first, so you have no guarantee that you're going to get in that ride. And the other thing is that they don't go every day. So when um, we do this, I re I'm signing up. I'll be the first to sign up for May. Um, and we can fly in there and uh, do that. So um, as we're talking about that, let's uh, kind of um, close up with sharing your events, how the PAC works, the Photographer's Adventure Club. Let's just do a 101 on um, what it stands for, how people can get involved, can they get involved anywhere um, with the PAC, and how do they find out about your events. So um, like I said, I I'm ready to sign up for your Havasupai Falls and the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, on that first part with the helicopter, we are um, in this next upcoming one. We're just going to include the helicopter price in the workshop. Um, you know, when you're spending this much time, money, and travel time getting somewhere for an extra hundred and twenty bucks or whatever, it's not worth it to um, you know chance what we chanced. Um, so we we are going to include the helicopter price in there, and we do it all inclusive. So there's one price, and it fits everybody. So. Um, we're just we're just considering putting that in just because of the safety issues of what we found on this. You know, I'm actually glad that we didn't have all 10 people in the workshop, and I'm glad that I didn't send them down by themselves because um, who you know who knows how the turn of events would have happened. So that is going to be included. So you'll be able to fly in and join us. Um, Alex, I think, is possibly thinking about coming. We're trying to schedule it to co-lead it. Um, Scott and Lori are both coming back regardless of the flooding. They both. Um, are coming back because we didn't we didn't get charged for the camping as far as I know down there so we're rolling over their credits for what we were supposed to pay into the following trip and it is the dry season so there's less <laughs> if not no chance of it flooding out there so uh, and and even under even under the best conditions I've taken a lot of people into the Grand Canyon um, Phantom Ranch area have a Supai area um, different things like that I've taken groups into the High Sierras and um, even with people in good condition under the best possible weather conditions, um, you still run into issues. You still run into problems. So um, being prepared and um, and uh, knowing your abilities is is a great thing. Yes. Um, and with the helicopter flight in, you know that that gets you down to the falls. It's only two miles from the town to the actual falls. Uh, to where you can camp out. So I mean, it gets you down there fresh. You're ready to shoot. You're ready to to do that kind of stuff. So that's that's a great great way to look at things when you're when you're doing stuff like this. Yep, well, and, and I 
I really, really want to say that because I just got back from the arches um, uh, with Mike Merritson on a night shoot. And, awesome. you know, I, I'm not, uh, um, and walking in the dark, I think one of you was, uh, well, Nick was talking about, you know, being so exhausted. Um, and a lot of times you do have that anxiety before going on an event. You have to realize what you can and can't do. And um, you really should do the recon if you're going to be hiking somewhere at night or, or doing something so that you know know what it's about. So, Nick, you're back here with uh, looks like Antelope Canyon to me. Mm -hmm. Yep, we were there a couple of, what, a month ago, Alex? And yeah. uh, same thing happened. Um, the flood came through. The, the flood came through a week before we went up there, and Lower Antelope was closed. They fixed all the stairs, dug the mud out, got the water pumped out, and then the Friday that we were taking those lightning pictures in Page, it flooded out again, and our it tool was supposed to be seven. <laughs> so we were all like, "Oh my God, what's going to happen?" We have, you know, how many people do we have on that? Fifteen, twenty people on that workshop. Um, you yeah. can see it in the picture here. People, Yasmin, who's our our uh, Las Vegas leader. Um, Alex, we had a bunch of us, Susie that went up, and we, we were like, wow, we're going to have to cancel this this trip out. While we were there, we drove up there because of a flash flood, and in there, you have nowhere to run. Um, they actually had 12 people right. die in Lower Antelope Canyon, so they have some ropes that they can throw down, and they have warnings and stuff like that, but they're really cautious. So they didn't let us in Saturday, but they did let us in Sunday. And um, you can see there, that these are some, kind of some of the trips we plan. We, we try to get people together. It's all about learning, education. Everything that I do with Photo Adventure Club is about just teaching people and passing it along. There's so many people out there and, and photographers, and yeah, you have a lot of egos and everything. It's like if I could give something back to the community, um, I really want to. I don't want to. I don't want to leave um, not giving something back to people. And and, I'm, and I, Alex is the same way. We're always willing to go out, do photo walks, teach people, help people, answer questions. People email me. Whether they've taken my Lightroom classes or not, I answer the emails and, and help out. Um, so it's really, Photo Adventure Club is all about community. And it's about getting free and low-cost education and trips to people that um, wouldn't normally want to plan it or do it themselves. And that's really the premise of it, I think. If, if I'm missing anything, I'll just you know, fill in. No, I mean, I, I don't think there's a better way to learn photography than with your friends. And that's why I love doing the photo walks. I do at least one a month. And it's usually 20, 25 people, and we go out, and I'll even see other people helping, um, you know, the people on the walk. So I'll be, I'll be shooting a shot, giving them my, my settings for the shot, showing them what I saw, and then they'll try to, to shoot it. But everybody gets different pictures, and you know, some people aren't familiar with their cameras, so we help them with that. Um, some people aren't familiar with simple things like their tripod or their setup, and we help them with that. And uh, hopefully by the end of the day, everybody's learned some stuff and got some great shots. And, and that's why I do it. Yeah, and I know the Google, Google Plus, a lot of people do um, photo walks, and they're usually 50 to 100 people. And I, I found in our business plan of building this um, pack that we wanted to keep it more to 10 people per leader. So we do keep it like around 20 or less if we have one or two leaders to um, – just add that quality. You know, quantity isn't always an important thing. I think quality is way more important to have one-on-one -on -one time talking to everyone. If you have a hundred people, I can't possibly. They all want to talk to me. They're like, let's go talk to Nick or Alex or whoever is the leader there, because you're the common denominator. They don't know anyone else except you. You invited them, so um, that's hard to talk to a hundred people. We're running the Scott Kelby Worldwide Photo Walks, and they they have it at fifty people, and I don't get to chat with everybody because there's just too many people. Um, right, Nick's so. actually doing one in Scottsdale in the morning, and I'm doing one in Tempe at night. So look that I, up too. I'm going in Flagstaff. Does that cool. count? All right, <laughs> they're doing one in Flag. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so and that's so anybody listening, okay? Um, we'll put the link. Uh, to the the photo walks, and I've just posted the link, um, Nick and Chuck, for the community. The Photographers Adventure Club community, and and is that right? Anyone can join that. Yeah, it's we have an affiliate oh, membership Plus. that's totally free. Um, so there's no cost involved at that level. We do have levels in Arizona that can be paid, but there's no pressure. We're not a used car salesman kind of pitch. It's if you want to do more, you can join and support the club. We we love our supporters. They help pay the bills because we have to get insurance and other actual real expenses, websites, domains people to, to run all of this, um, but it's a, 
um, 100% volunteer run company and um, it's a not-for-profit company. We're, we're trying to do everything as low cost or free. We do monthly meetings too. We're having Joel Grimes come in, which is a phenomenal um, portrait photographer on November 1st. We just had Matt Kleskowski speak for us in Las Vegas, the Lightroom guru. Um, we've had Ken Sklude, a Canon Explorer of Light, come in. Alex uh, Olympus Visionary teaches for us. So we, we have some pretty big names that come through our walls. Um, and now with 30 chapters all over the country, we're able to spread that love everywhere. It's not just Arizona anymore. It's New Jersey, Philadelphia, L.A., San Francisco. We have chapters, you know, in 30 different locations. So it's uh, for the people that love to travel, you can now meet people in other places. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing that's happened. Okay, so let's let's talk about if we have a listener who's out, <laughs> out there now and they would like to start a pack wherever they're at because they don't have one. What do they do? What should they do? Um, they could just contact us through the website. It says on there, it says uh, chapters, and when you go through, it's like no chapter in your area. Click here, and you could click on the chapter area and bring that up and fill out a short form. Basically, you have to have yourself and I think 10 interested people and then if you have 10 interested people, you can start a chapter. It doesn't have to be, uh, it's not very hard. We don't, we don't need chapters with thousands and thousands of people. You know, it's, it's easy. You have to have 10 people that are interested in doing photo walks, having fun and learning. And, uh, and that's really the only criteria. So and it's, okay. we're, we're doing, we're going to charge eventually to start chapters, but not until 2014. And it's going to be a small administrative charge. So that's waived for anyone that wants to start a chapter in their city from now until January 1st. After that, we figure we're going to have to hire someone that's going to have to handle these. When we start getting hundreds of requests for people to start these, we're going to have to hire an admin to take in all that stuff. So we're going to need to, you know, it's like a $99 charge. So that is on the website, but I'm extending to everyone that's watching this today and, and everyone that wants to sign up before January 1st that, you know, we're going to waive that fee for you. So um, we're, we're back on a, uh, you might have a screen share stuck because we're, seen your um, uh, photo of the flood, but anyway. Yep, no, that's the picture. That's the only picture I got up there um, <laughs> of it being pretty before we got evacuated. So oh, okay. okay. That's, that's little Navajo <laughs> Falls. The, the blue isn't in the foreground, so I, I, I went up towards the blue sky and, and, you know, did some photography cheats like that to minimize not it being all blue on the bottom. Um, I think Alex has a picture of it being all muddy that he can throw up there, too, but... Uh, yeah, that's that's the picture that um, we had gotten um, there, and then got to the top, and there's the signs that say trail closed, no one's allowed to hike any further down there. So they did evacuate us after that. It was, we can see it's a blue sky, like Alex said, beautiful. But that night they got three or four more flash floods that came through, and actually the next day too. So that's why they were kicking us out. So <laughs> I've uh, okay. posted a picture of one of the walks. Okay, I got this that one up there. Let me get it back. Um, this is one that I do. It's uh, sunset in the superstitions, and I, you know, I just love the sky. And we, I had four or five photographers in front of me, so I got down and took a picture. And this is kind of what we do. Um, this is everybody's. This particular picture, there is actually you can see three planets. I believe it was Venus, Mars, and Jupiter were all lined up in like a pyramid out there, and that's what we were shooting. So, um, Alex, is there a fee then if people are coming to your night photography where you're helping them with their camera and their settings and their tripods to do this walk with you? Is there a fee? I believe that was a uh, premium meetup. So that's like the yearly membership. Um, and I think it's $49 a year. Correct. The, that um, but that's that's not just for the one walk. That's for the whole year. That's for the right. whole year. Okay. That's the whole year. It comes year. up to $3 a month or something for the whole year of premium walks. And, and we do, what, 150, 200 events a year. So we well, that seems like, you know, that seems so reasonable to have your expertise and help. And especially if you keep it to 10 people. Because yeah, I said so. Um, 
Okay, that follow. was the, that was the one on your screen on your lower third was the uh, yeah photo. the photo advclub.com. So um, and I'll put I'll put both of them on the um, description of how to contact both of you on this YouTube um, archive that people will be able to watch so they can get your names your contact information. You will be on the photo tour. Um, Adventure or photo tour global directory. Yep. You'll be there as a, a featured member. Like You're going to be posting um, your events, Correct. so people will be able to go there with a link directly back to you. Yes, we're going to have probably um, in the next month. We're probably going to have at least five, maybe ten um, workshops. Um, Joshua Tree, Arches, Zion, Bryce. Um, probably another Antelope Canyon, the Havasupai one, those are all going to be going up on our page and then linking over to the Photo um, Global um, Tour. Well. Yeah, <laughs> Photo Tour Global Director, oh that's my. great. So, so Nick, um, can anybody, let's say somebody was going on vacation and they were coming here, could they go to your site, pay a fee, and join up with your group? Well, they don't even have to. They they, they, um, they, it's totally free. Yeah, they can join in, and there's plenty of free events. The the premium is just a bonus for people that are very active. Um, I, we would say 98% of our events are totally free. So we're, we're very big into, again, community. So most of our photo walks are free. The premium ones that Alex was talking about are just a bonus on top. It's kind of like the icing on the cake. Like, you know, we do special ones or repeat ones, um, special guest stuff like that. So um, really there's no fees involved to be a part of it, and you can come to free meetings with that I was talking about. You can come to free photo walks. You can come to tips classes. There's all this stuff that opens the door for. And then if you're really like the active photographer, we have, you know, that premium option. We actually have an elite option, too, that includes classes. So it would include my Lightroom classes. It would include Photo 101. So there is three options out there. But, yeah, there's... We have no requirements for cameras. You can have a point and shoot. You can have a 1DX or a, you know a Nikon D7000. Um, you know we don't we don't discriminate against your level, and we love new people coming in because we get to teach them all this great stuff that they were confused about before. So um, we're not snobby in that sense where it's like oh you have to be an elitist or something. We're we're totally the opposite of that. Oh, that's great. And so now if, um, okay, you mentioned that you were going to have another Antelope Canyon. Now, there would be a fee for that because you can't go in there for free. You have to go Yeah, with in. the workshops, the workshops are, they cost, and some of them are very expensive because um, there's Indian fees, there's travel fees, there's gas for us to drive up there, there's planning time. Campgrounds food. and everything else. Yeah, so all of that costs money um, to do, so obviously we can't, Put the bill for everybody, so those the workshops that do cost, but the, all the local stuff doesn't, and even Sedona, we don't charge. Sedona is a two-hour drive for us. That's usually a free photo walk too. When we go up there, we go up there quite a bit. Flagstaff, Sedona, um, we don't charge people for those. Jerome, when we go do the junkyard in Jerome, if we pay to go in the junkyard, we charge people for the junkyard. We don't make money off that. It's it's again, it's very much community based. Not it's not a it's not a it's a not profit event kind of company. But again, when you do certain types of events, you have to pay for stuff. So um, you know we can't we can't eat those expenses. Great. So um, Alex, do you have anything you want to summarize up with here as we uh, get ready to sign off and uh, have enjoyed your journey uh, with the electrical storms? And do you have that picture, Alex? No, of thank the, you. Uh, thank you for the which one? The, the mud one. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to find it. Oh, okay. No worries. <laughs> Wasn't prepared with that one, but yeah. Um, maybe I'll post it on the page or something. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having us, uh, Cairo. Yeah, we had you. a great time and everything. And um, I'd love to see that camera you have, Alex. Did you did you can tell us a little bit about the new camera that's coming out? Um, the the EM1 is the Pro Level Olympus Four Thirds Mirrorless. Um, and here so it is. How, much do, how much does it weigh? Um, it's solid. It's a magnesium chassis, and I've got the hand grip on it, so it's it's a good weight, but it's a lot less than um, than Nick's Mark III. I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, I, that, that this, was when I had when I did my night shoot and rented the the lens and the camera. It was so heavy. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I, how can I do well, this? Well, this this is a Prime 75. 
So on the micro four thirds, this is a 150 millimeter lens. And it's a 1.8. So His are way lighter than us. We, we went you know, out to the You wouldn't have a 150 that's this big. You have one that's this big. You yeah. Know, so. Um, but it'll be available uh, October 14th, I believe. And I did get a message from Amazon um, that it is already their number one selling camera this year, and it has not been released yet. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. They're and so what, you, what is it going to retail about? Do you know? The body's fourteen hundred. Okay, and so, that lens is. Uh, that's uh, one point eight seventy five. That's about nine hundred. Okay. So, <laughs> but you can get. You can get like a twelve to fifty mm. that's waterproof. That'll work with this body because it's magnesium with waterproof seals. It's not submergible, but it is waterproof. It's shockproof. It's freeze proof. Um, and. Um, I believe the twelve to fifty is about five hundred dollars. Great. Okay. That, that, that company, Kara, Kara, that company is really one innovative company. Um, Canon and Nikon should really start watching them and and put some innovation in our cameras because they just kind of lag behind. You know, I love my Canon, but every time Alex shows up with a new camera, there's always these cool things that he has, and, and we're jealous and we make fun of him because he shows up with this little camera. And he gets better shots than us sometimes. He shows up with like, uh, you know, it in his pocket. We have seven bags of lenses and cameras, and walk out to the wave, and he pulls his camera. Like, what is that? Your backup? He's like, no, it's my camera. It's like, you know what? You're not invited anymore <laughs> to these trips. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's what's interesting is this the camera that Trey Radcliffe um, just tried out not too long ago. Um, he switched to Sony, which is just a small too. So they're, they're okay, they're but small. it's the whole concept of the small camera. Right, the it's the mirrorless. Yeah. Uh, because you know, I have photographers come in. I, I live in Williams, and the next time you guys have to come from Tempe, just know that there's a campground here <laughs> in in Williams, <laughs> and uh, that would be way less uh, time driving from Tempe. But um, anyway, so uh, people will come, and uh, I'll do a tour of Arizona. We'll go to the Grand Canyon, and every time. It's like they never have the right lens. You know, here's here's a here's something coming up close or something's out far. So if this Olympus is going to be the right lens all the time. Is that right? Uh, well, the lenses are much smaller, so it's a lot easier to carry a bunch of them. I go places <laughs> and I have – I go places into my backpack. I'll have four bodies, six lenses, two flashes, solar charger, extra batteries, Cables and they're like that all fit in there. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool well, well, this, is, this has been great, and we thank both of you. Um, thank we'll you. look forward to seeing your events on the Photo Tour Global Directory dot com site um, because it is a Google event map and it is for the world so if you're going somewhere on vacation uh, you're going somewhere for business you're just going somewhere for fun check the event map you will see photographer events all over the world and we're delighted that people uh, took the time to share their uh, natural disaster photos and we hope that you'll think about planning um, for uh, plan B if uh, the weather doesn't cooperate and what you're going to do and having your survival kit and also your um, important numbers you know, in case of an emergency, because if something would happen, even if they're your friend, they don't know who to contact if something would happen to you. Um, so that that's also a, a good thing to have. And um, I, I, we had some here from Paula Little. She knows both of you, and she says she did. Hi, Paula. A Hey Paul. She did a photo light painting workshop with okay. Nick and Al Nick and Alex twice, and both were wonderful learning experience. Uh, as a pretty new photographer and premium member of Pack, I strongly recommend the group. So I guess you can't have a better raving fan than somebody. Um, who uh, uh, will print that on the event. And I'm excited to meet Paula. Um, she was in on some of the other landscape photography shows. And um, she is driving up to Flagstaff for the Kelby um, Photo Walk. So tell us again, that's October what? October? 5th. 
October 5th. Yeah, October 5th. Yeah, mine's And mine that's all over the world, up. and that's free, right? That's totally free. Yeah, it's worldwide. So it's th hundreds of thousands of people walking that day. It's it's a huge event, and Kel Scott Kelby has prizes. Um, I, did yours fill up, Alex? I know mine filled up already. At, uh, no, at I don't think so. I think I've got spots open. So yeah, I'm so doing we'll Tempe at night. Mill yeah. Avenue, Tempe at night, Saturday night. It's going to be crazy. It's a college town, so we should have a lot of interesting stuff to shoot. I'm going to be at yours, too, because I think mine Scottsdale <laughs> ones in the morning, so I'll, I'll have right. lunch and then come down and, and hang out with you. That's why I split them up like that. So, cool. Great, great. Well, um, well thank you. Just so, be safe out there, everyone. You know, be safe. Keep a, you know, a, be aware of your surroundings. You know, you can't hear this stuff coming sometimes, so. Yep, that's, yep. That's it's perfect. definitely, definitely a good idea. Make sure you know what's going on. Pay attention to the weather. Pay attention to your environment. Um, even street shooting at night. Pay attention to what's going around you, uh, going on around you, because you know you never know what could happen. There's, there's, you got storms. You got people driving cars. You have all kinds of crazy things out there, and we want you to get to get the picture, and we want you to be safe. And we want to make sure you come back so you can show us the pictures. That's the big thing. <laughs> well, that's great. And, you know, being aware of your surroundings, even animals, you know, snakes, different different things, you know, just very important to, to just be around. And thank you for sharing your time. And we hope that you'll check out the um, Photographers Adventure Club, join the community. Circle our page, Photo Tour Global Directory. Watch for our next show. We have pages here. We have a community uh, on Google Plus as well as Facebook and Twitter. So we'll be connecting with all of you photographers around the world, and we're wishing you a great weekend. Peace, and we'll see you the next time. Thanks, Bye -bye. Kara. Thank you.